Hello and thanks for joining us on this Friday. I'm Kaylin Johnson and here's a look at the stories we're following today. Now at noon, right now the threat of wildfires across the state are an increasing concern for fire, fire officials across Arkansas. What you can do to reduce the threat. Getting health help in a mental crisis becomes easier tomorrow. Just ahead, what has changed with the National Suicide Hotline? Plus, as we head into the weekend, we have the latest album release info to help curate your weekend playlist. But first, meteorologist Scott Covert is here with us. Scott, it's hot, it's dry out there. What can you tell us? McKaylin, it is. And in the summer in Arkansas, mm -hmm. it's going to be hot, it's going to be humid, and unfortunately, probably pretty dry for the foreseeable future. Now, we do have a chance of rain in your weekend forecast, and of course, we'll talk about that. Here's where we're at right now at the noon hour. We do have a lot of sunshine across the state with a few clouds passing from the north to the south, beginning to move into the metro. Temperature wise, this is what we've got 96. We're already up to 96 in Little Rock. 96 90 currently in Pine Bluff, 91 the reading in Stuttgart. And when you factor in the humidity and there's not as much today, uh, you, you inch those numbers up a little bit more, especially there in western Arkansas. Your forecast takes us to 99. It's going to be a toasty day. Lots of sunshine expected. Our wind out of the southeast 5 to 10 miles per hour. And because of that direction of the wind, we're probably going to see some moisture transported into the state. You'll notice by tomorrow, not only is it a bit hotter, but the humidity starts to go back up as well. In terms of your weekend rain chances. We do have a 30% chance on Sunday. I'll tell you it's not going to be a washout more likely scattered to isolated at best. We'll take a look at future radar and how much rain you could squeeze out coming right up. Thanks, Scott, and you've heard it every day lately. It is severely dry in the natural state. It's creating dangerous conditions. Every single county in the state is either in high or moderate wildfire danger risk, and there are more counties with burn bans in place than those that don't. The Arkansas Forestry Commission hopes these burn bans will keep us in the clear until we see some more rain and humidity. Those with the Forestry Commission warn fires can escape control very easily right now, and if ignited, they're going to burn very aggressively. They say they say all our Kansans need to be conscious and careful. Something that we may consider mundane could be the spark that causes a wildfire. Be aware when parking vehicles in tall grass, throwing out a cigarette bud, even mowing and bush hogging right now. Hitting a rock could start a wildfire. It's important to note, even if your part of town gets rain, that isn't a green light to burn. So a lot of times people think anytime it rains, it's okay to start burning. It's not. You need to monitor uh, because when it's hot and windy and sunny, the, the the rain evaporates quickly, the fine fuels dry out again, and so uh, wait for the burn bans to be lifted before people decide to burn. For preventing fires, firefighters suggest moving any combustible materials like firewood and leaves away from your house. They urge caution against using outdoor equipment that create hot exhaust particles, which can also ignite a fire. And today, questions remain after a toddler accidentally shot and killed his older brother in Jefferson County. Now investigators want to know how a five year old got a hold of a loaded gun. THB 11's Ashley Godwin reports on the concern for other children in the home. You know, just lost for words right now um, just because of the nature of the actual incident and the ages of those involved. It was 2 p.m. when police got the call. A child had shot his brother. When police got to the house on Shannon Valley Drive in Jefferson County, they found an eight-year-old boy dead, shot and killed by his five-year-old brother. It, it appears that based on arrival, um, at least a mother was actually present. Uh, it was um, at least reported that she may have been sleeping at the time, um, heard the gunshot, went in, and actually found, obviously, the eight-year-old um, laying on the floor. Police tell us there were four other siblings there at the time. DHS was called to assess the welfare of the children. They'll make a decision what happens with the other siblings uh, and the actual the uh, five year as well. A heartbreaking tragedy for everyone involved. Sheriff Woods reminding people to keep your guns secure and out of reach of children. Just a tragic, unfortunate situation. I think that could have been avoided, certainly. Police are still in the early stages of their investigation, but there's one question they are actively working on answering. Was the gun in a secure area before the shooting? The sheriff said the answer to this question could decide whether criminal charges are filed.
Now in national news, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says a vote will likely take place in the U.S. House today on abortion rights. Today, the House is expected to vote on the Women's Health Protection Act of 2022. It will be the first time Congress has voted on this since the Supreme Court overturned federal abortion rights three weeks ago today. However, just like last year's version of this bill, it's expected to pass in the House but then fail in the Senate. A watchdog group says the U.S. Secret Service erased text messages from January 5th and 6th, 2021, shortly after they were requested by oversight officials investigating the agency's response to the U.S. Capitol riot. However, the U.S. Secret Service is currently pushing back on the allegations. This all comes more than a year after the riots. The Homeland Security Inspector General review of the Secret Service and its actions on January 6th is still going on right now. Now, because of all of this, the Congressional Committee is now putting a spotlight on the Secret Service. Riley Blackburn has the latest on what one particular internal watchdog is saying about it all. The head of the House January 6th committee is vowing to investigate what he called the extraordinarily troubling destruction of Secret Service records. A letter has been obtained by CBS News from the Department of Homeland Security Inspector General to a pair of congressional committees. It said that many Secret Service agents' text messages from January 5th and 6th, 2021 were erased as part of a device replacement program. What's more, the Inspector General says the texts were deleted after his investigators asked for them. A spokesman for the Secret Service denied any wrongdoing. Special Agent in Charge Steve Kopech said some data was lost when the cell phones were reset during a scheduled system migration. Kopech also pushed back on the timing of the IG's request for electronic communications. He said the agency wasn't told to provide the records until February 26th, more than seven weeks after the riot. The Secret Service's activities had already drawn the scrutiny of the January 6th committee. Last month, a former White House aide testified she was told President Trump had an altercation with an agent who refused to take him to the Capitol. President reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Mr. Engel grabbed his arm, said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. The agents involved denied those claims, and according to the Associated Press, the driver and a member of Trump's security detail are willing to refute the story under oath. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. This morning, a Secret Service spokesman is denying the text messages were deleted maliciously. Meanwhile, the select committee met on Capitol Hill yesterday to, among other things, weigh in on whether to call the former president and vice president to testify. Customers will return to the Buffalo supermarket where 10 black people were killed two months ago. Employees, neighbors and elected officials paid a visit to the overhauled store Thursday, the same day a federal grand jury issued a 27 count hate crime and firearms indictment against the white suspected gunmen. Now, drivers may soon get some relief from soaring gas prices. On Thursday, oil was trading below $95 a barrel. That's the first time that's happened since Russia invaded Ukraine in February. And speaking of relief in less than two weeks, people here can begin applying for a payment assistance program in the state. The Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program will begin accepting applications from those who need help with their cooling bills. You can start submitting applications Monday, July 25th. Eligible applicants will be able to get help through September 30th or until funds run out. Eligibility is determined by household size and income. Last month, Americans received more than 7 billion robocalls. Now there is a new effort to stop at least some of them. Elise Preston explains. When the phone rings, it's often a robocall, and one in particular is frustrating consumers everywhere. We have not received a reply to notices that you have received in the mail regarding your vehicle service contract. The call blocking app RoboKiller says last year, Americans received almost 13 billion calls about car warranties. At this point in 2022, it is statistically possible that every American who owns a phone number, so even if you have multiple phones, has received a car warranty robocall at least three times. The Federal Communications Commission is cracking down on these calls. The warranty is up for renewal. I'd like to congratulate you on your $1,000 instant rebate. The agency recently told several voice service providers to stop allowing illegal robocalls, and the Ohio Attorney General filed suit against a telemarketing group 
responsible for billions of these calls. The suit itself alleges unfair and deceptive acts and practices, and it also alleges illegal robocalls and robocalling activity things like calling people who are on the do not call registry. Melissa Smith with the Ohio Attorney General's office says consumers are often duped into buying a vehicle service contract. And that differs from a car warranty. And many times these calls make it sound like this is going to have the same protection as a warranty, but that's not entirely true. How do you know when a call is legit or bogus? That can be really hard, especially for this type of robocall. Robokiller's Julia Porter says if you don't recognize a number, just don't answer the call. And if you do answer and it sounds suspicious, hang up. Elise Preston, CBS News, New York. A new three-digit hotline number brings people in crisis one step closer to help. More on the new mental health hotline in six minutes. Scott? We finally made it to the end of the week, so now the question is, what does the weather have in store for us for the weekend? I've got the answers as well as a preview of some really hot weather heading our direction coming up when we return.